This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to start talking about motion effects because I had a few emails back and forth with a viewer who had some questions about motion effects or slow motion effects and how they work. He was having a little bit of problems trying to do motion effects inside of, for example, a 1080i project with footage he was taking from a 2398 progressive project and Media Composer was giving him some problems. And it occurred to me that I've never really gone in depth into motion effects and I thought in this lesson what we would do is we'd start out with the basics. We're going to get in and talk about how to do basic slow motion and speed up effects and then we're going to progress from there in upcoming lessons. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And we have a shot set up of basically our two basketball players. You can see our basketball player in red is getting ready to slam dunk. And then we jump cut to him letting go of the rim and dropping to the ground. Now what we're going to do is to put a slow motion effect in between these two shots, a close up of the basket to show him slamming that basketball home, okay? And I have a shot here that we're going to use to do just that. Now you'll see that it's a very quick shot and the slow motion effect is going to be a little bit stuttery. As you can see as I go through frame by frame you can see that it's just a very stuttery shot in general because probably we got a high shutter going on in the camera. Okay, But that's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. Now I'm going to show you it's not necessarily the wrong way to do things when you're getting started but it's a way that a lot of people get into creating motion effects. And for me, I can find it problematic when you're getting started if you don't really know what you're doing or if you're not really sure what all of these different parameters do. So here's how I see most people doing this effect when they get started. What they do is they take the clip, they drop it in between the two clips in their timeline so that it looks just the way that it should, kind of like that, okay? And what they then do is they head to the effects palette, command and eight on the Mac, control and eight on Windows, they come down to the time warp section they take that time warp effect and they drag it and they drop it down onto the shot in their timeline. Now, to do the time warp, it's a simple jump to the left and then a step to the right. No, I'm just kidding. That's a little Rocky Horror Picture humor that I just threw in there. But seriously, to get in and to work with this effect, many people think that they're going to be stepping into effects mode. Now, you'll notice that as soon as you hit the effects mode button, the standard effects mode window does not appear and in its place what appears is the motion effect editor. Now this window can be a little bit daunting because there's a lot of things going on inside it, you know, getting in adjusting the source, the output, are you, you know, getting in and working with the speed, the position. What does all this mean? Well, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about this in an upcoming lesson. But like I said, I want to start things out fairly simple and fairly straightforward. Now, for right now, I'm just going to leave this effect on my shot because I'm going to come back to it in just a second. Now, what we need to do before we get started creating motion effects, the basic way is we want to actually apply the command to our composer window that will let us create motion effects. So we know to create commands, we need to come to tools. We're going to come down to command palette or the shortcut command or control three. And inside of the effects section, right first, right off the bat, the motion effect editor. Now you're going to notice that I have it applied here in the preview window and over here in the actual timeline window. Now you're probably thinking, why would you want that effect in your composer window twice? It just seems like a little bit of a waste of time. Well, what's cool about having it over here in the sequence window is that if we happen to have a motion effect clip in our timeline or an effect that we applied from the time warp section, I can simply hit the motion effect editor button and there we go. So if you're an editor that likes to work by clicking, you know, having a few commands in the composer window like I do, 
you can have access to it there. But where I really keep this command is over in the preview window. Because in the preview window, it serves a very different function. If I head down and I click on the motion effect editor button, it doesn't open the motion effect editor, it opens the motion effect window. Now in here's where we can get in and do things like set up the speed of our clip. Do we want to get in and set the speed by the duration, by the, you know, the rate, how the frames per second, or do we want to set it by speed percentage? Now, in most cases, I'm only really sticking with four percentages, it's technically five, because I don't really consider fit to fill to be a percentage because that's just one of those, you have a space you got to fill, let's just make the slow-mo and make it happen, boom, it's done. I normally stick with the 66, 33, and 50 uh, percentage speed. So basically 66% of the speed, you know, half the speed, and then 33% speed. Because basically that in a 1080i project, like what we're working on right now, has us at 20 frames per second, 15 frames per second, and 10 frames per second. Once you start getting in and working with these sort of really odd, you know, speed percentages like, you know, 12.2, you know, percent speed, then you're getting in and you're doubling up frames and messing around with fields and it gets just to be a little bit of a mess. That's why I sort of like to stick with these. Well, I mean, if you want to call them round numbers, you can call them round numbers. They're not necessarily round numbers, but they are round numbers when it comes to the actual frame rates, frames per second. So remember, 10, 15, 20 is how I like to stick with it. Now, if you're speeding stuff up, don't even worry about it. You could just go crazy because at that point, you're just con condensing everything down and you're not really going to notice if any little frames are skipped here or there. Okay. Now, obviously, the fit to fill command, fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to come back to the strobe motion command in just a second here. Uh, but right now, let's talk about the render to field motion effect using because I did mention that I was in a 1080i project. Now, you'll remember back in the day when we were working with our freeze frames, we had a lot of options. We had the ability to get in and to set up freeze frames as duplicate, both and interpolated fields. Now, we do have one more command in here that came along a little bit after those three, which is VTR style. Now, what exactly does VTR style mean? Well, back in the days when we actually used to have, you know, VTR sitting in the edit suite beside us or even in the equipment rack, if you were to pop a digital, you know, beta cam or an HD cam tape into one of these decks and you were to go up and you were to take the jog wheel and you were to turn it ever so slightly, it always gave you the best looking slow motion effect. And that is what this parameter is meant to mimic. It's meant to mimic VTR, the, the style of just taking a jog wheel and a VTR and turning it ever so slightly. So once I've got this all set up the way that I like it, I'm simply going to say create and the motion effect will now appear not only in the preview window, but it's going to appear over here in my bin as well. I can now hit play. Now you're gonna notice that it's a little bit choppy. Now you'll remember when I originally played this back, it was a little bit choppy as I went through. I think, like I said, that's because they have a high shutter going on in the camera, but that's okay. We've slowed this shot down. I'm just gonna remove the shot we have in our timeline. I'm gonna drop the shot in in its place. And we're now basically all set to go. Very cool. Okay, now let's just take a look at some of these other shots because I want to show you another command in here. Maybe I can even use it sort of here when our basketball player starts running up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of that to about here, I think. Perfect. Okay. And what I'm going to do with this is I'd like to show you the strobe command in here. Let's go back to the motion effect editor. And here's the strobe command here. So what basically does that do? Well, what that does is it's going to create almost a flicker effect for us, basically determined by how many frames we want to have updated. Maybe you want to have the strobe updated every three frames, every five frames. And obviously, the longer apart that the frames are going to be, the more of a, more like a stop motion animation type of effect that you're going to be creating. Okay. Now I'm going to leave the strobe motion set, you know, relatively high. Let's put it at somewhere around, actually, I think I'm going to put it around eight. And then I'll create one that's a little bit, you know, sort of way back at the other end of the spectrum, down at about a two frames, and you'll see what the difference is. Now I'm just going to leave the speed, you know what? Let's actually set the speed at 100%. This might be a good way to do this. I'm going to actually select the whole clip, okay? And I'm going to leave that update set to be eight frames, okay? And we're going to set our speed to be 100%, okay? And this is basically just going to create the strobe effect for us. Now, What's important to keep in mind is that before when I created the motion effect, I just hit the create button and we were all good to go because it plays in real time. Strobe effects are not real time effects. They're actually a blue dot effect, believe it or not. So I'm simply gonna say create and render. I mean, the render time takes like nothing, okay? And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drop it down at the end of my timeline here, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same effect. And what I'm gonna do to get back to the clip, I could try to track it down in my bin. 
or I can just drop down my my selection window here and I'm going to come down and just choose the shot right here and the reason I'm doing that is because it'll keep my in and out points no matter where they are on the clip okay we're going to come back to the motion effect window I'm just going to change this to be about every two frames okay and I'll say create and render again and what's also very cool about the motion effects is not only do they appear inside of the preview window but you're also going to find them over here in your bin and the great thing is is that if you're creating these strobe effects it actually tags them as being the strobe effects which is also very handy to have okay now I'm going to take this strobe effect, which is the strobe effect of two frames. I'm going to drop this in first. Okay. Now, here's the original shot. Let me show you the original shot up here. Okay, 590. Come back to the beginning, hit play. It's very smooth. Okay. And what I'd like to do now is get into that little bit of a strobe effect, give it a little bit of a shuddery look. Let's come back to the beginning now and hit play. And you can see it's a little bit on the shuddery side. We'll take a look at what happens when we jump down to eight frames. Look at that. Now we can obviously take this farther and farther based on how many frames per second we want to have on the screen. But this is a great way just to create very cool little changed up motion effects, which in a lot of cases I see people creating as edits. They get in, they're creating freeze frames, all this type of stuff. You don't need to do any of that. You can do all of that with the simple strobe command inside of the motion effects command. Okay, so I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. We've gotten in and we've started to create some very basic motion effects. And this is a good place to get you started because as you're creating motion effects, it's going to be taking those motion effects, drop them into your bin so you can easily go back and get them. You can match frame to them, find the bin that they're in. They're very, very simple and straightforward to work with. And what we're going to do in our next lesson is we're going to get in and start talking about the motion effect editor. I want to show you how the motion effect editor works and how you're not only going to be able to get in and manipulate motion effects that you created with the motion effect command, but you're also going to be able to get in and start working with the effects inside of the time warp category of Media Composer to really get in and to really create some stylized motion effects. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.